you very much for joining us today. Um, you are the regional support manager in the East and West Midlands for practice plans. I right? certainly am. Yeah. Hi, Gabby. Hi, yeah. And uh, you've been there for eight years. I have. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. How's that been? Yeah, love it. You know, love the job that we do, you know, and that resonates through everyone in practice plan. So, yeah. Excellent. Well, it sounds like you're um, you're well placed to be answering the questions on membership plans today. Yeah, brilliant. So it's kind of going to be an, an overview of what a membership plan is, because I think there's a lot of providers out there, um, including yourselves. Yeah. And I think a lot of the time there might be a lot of information and people don't quite understand how it works, what the benefits are. And all the other questions that come in between Absolutely, that. Absolutely, yeah. So, I think a good place to start is, is what exactly is a dental membership plan? Okay, yeah, no problem at all. So, a dental membership is something that you can have in place in your practice that gives your patients a way of budgeting for their routine care. So, that's where it should always start for any practice is, what do mm. we want to achieve with a membership? You know, what purpose is it going to serve? And the, the purpose for the patient is a way of, you know, as I say, spreading the cost, attending regularly, you know, keeping healthy. For you as an owner, there's lots of benefits, of course. You know, that security of having people paying into a monthly, you know, amount, month in, month out, that's going to mean that they're prepaying for their appointments, but also because they're paying, they're going to attend. So you've got that win-win mm. scenario where your patients are healthy, they're attending regularly, that gives you that opportunity to spot problems, it means you can talk to them about treatments that might be of interest, but for the patient, you know, in a, in a world where budgeting is becoming tougher and tougher, you know, mm. everybody wants a way of spreading the cost, it's a great mechanism for your patients. You kind of preempted my question there which was do you, do you feel this is particularly relevant at the moment given what is going yeah. on across the UK obviously it, it means that patients have um, a knowledge of how much is going to be coming out of their bank account each month they can factor that in do you, do, have you found that this is this is something that perhaps is growing in popularity absolutely and I think it's something that you know as we come off the back of sort of covid times mm. you know and, and practices sort of got reopened and got back into the swing of seeing patients again the demand for membership is going up and up and up you know we've had lots mm. of practices that have come back and said actually I'd like more of my patients on a plan because we can really see the benefit of that but also also, patients are more, de you know, are demanding that mechanism now of they're happy mm. to pay, they're happy to come on a private basis, but they do need a way of, of making that affordable. Yeah, yeah. I think affordability is key at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for, for patients. I can imagine there isn't just one type of membership plan, though. So what 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 kind of membership plans are available for patients? Yeah, so we try and be very bespoke to what, you know, a practice needs. So we're certainly not a one-size-fits-all. You know, we know that, you know, dentists like to work in different ways. They like to include different um, appointments within a membership. The main sort of overview when you're looking at what types of membership we provide most of our patients are on what we would call a maintenance plan. So that's where you're thinking about your checkups, your hygiene, your x-rays, some discount of treatment. You, you kind of core box standard of what a patient might need, you know, year to year. Mm. But there's other plans that sit outside of that. So you've got plans whereby you might want to include treatment as a way, again, of patients being able to pay that little bit more every month but they're budgeting mm -hmm. for things that might happen, you know, treatments that they might need in the future. You've got things like hygiene only memberships. I mean, these are so popular with practices that hold an NHS contract. So you'd be looking okay. at practices where, you know, they have a hygienist in place and lots of their NHS patients tap into that private service for hygiene. But again, would like a way to budget for that. You know, that helps with the fail to attend. It, it means they're going to turn up for those appointments. So hygiene only can be a great, a great tool. You know, and then things like children's plans. You know, I'm seeing more and more demand for those in my area now because, you know, if people aren't able to take any more patients on the NHS, they want an affordable way to be able to see the children. 
And then we have practices that include, you know, bespoke things into plans, Gabby. You know, things like that might include whitening. You know, we do okay. facial aesthetics memberships. You know, mm -hmm. if they want to budget again for that regular facial work that they're doing on a patient. So there really is a whole raft of things available, you know, that we can absolutely work with you to tailor to suit you and your business. Mm -hmm. I think maybe that's answered a lot of questions there because... I think often when people think of, of dental plans for patients, it, it might be what you described at the beginning yeah. there, which was that kind of bread and butter dentistry, the maintenance of your oral health. So it's hygiene appointments, maybe a checkup yeah. a year, things like that. But to be able to include things like cosmetic aesthetic mm -hmm. treatments as well is perhaps something that some, some people didn't yeah. know. Um, yeah. So, yeah, thank you for thank you for filling us in there on the types of membership plans that are available yeah. and can be offered. Um, I think there's obviously a lot of, advantages to having a membership plan in yeah. place and i think it'd be good to to sort of get the lowdown on why it is beneficial yeah. um and and what why it might be a, the better option in comparison to things like you know pay as you go treatment just when as and when you feel you need it absolutely so i mean as we talked about at the beginning gabby the benefit to you as a business for having them on a plan mm. of course is that secure income you know month in month out how many patients are paying ready for their checkups their hygiene or whatever other type of plan you offer but, uh -huh. you know, quite often I get asked, well, why put them on a plan over pay as you go? You know, what's the benefit to the patient of being on the plan? In terms of how you cost your membership, that's something that, again, we bespoke with our practices. We don't give you a price and say that's what you have to charge. Every practice will have their own membership fees. So when we look at, you know, your membership model for your patients, some practices will choose to offer their membership at a slightly discounted rate versus what the checkups, the hygiene, the treatments, etc. would be if they were pay as you go. Lots of practices don't discount because they're giving other benefits. You know, they're giving that worldwide cover that we offer. You know, they're giving that discount of treatments. Well, as a pay as you go patient, I don't have access to those benefits. So, you know, when you're saying to a patient, look, I can save you money, we can spread the cost, but also we've got a worldwide package in there as well that's going to help you with the unforeseen. So it really yeah. is about the patients receiving more. It's about them feeling part of your club almost, you know, part of the practice, something that yeah. I can't get as a pay-as-you-go patient. You know, these are extra rewards and benefits that are just not available unless they're a member of the practice so you know we yeah. do find that people on the membership really value all of the aspects of the, of the membership it isn't just about saving money you know it's about mm. saying to patients donna because you're a member of the practice we're going to see you regularly we're going to get those appointments always booked in the diary so that we know that we're mm -hmm. seeing you at the right intervals and yeah. should you need a little bit of treatment you've got a discount built in there as well and again we work with the practice gabby to set that discount so there's no okay. preset amount that they have to offer and again we would okay. exclude certain treatments you know if they wanted to protect things like orthodontics for example implant work you mm. can specify which items of treatment would get the discount and which wouldn't so again we, oh, okay. we would help you with all of that before you you started selling the plan what what about um, if a patient wants to to cancel, for example, say they were they were locked into a membership plan? Is this is this something that you pay? Is it is it is it like car insurance where there's a fee to kind of exit? No. How how does that how does that no. work? So we, we try to make it as fair and transparent for everybody because okay. you know I'm a firm believer that if you sell the plan correctly in the beginning. So, you know, you focus on the health message and you say to patients, look, Donna, the best way I can keep you healthy is to become a member of the practice and here are the reasons why. If you sell it correctly in the beginning, quite often yeah. patients won't feel the need to cancel. We tend to find that patients stay on plan an average of around 12 years. So oh, it wow. really is a long-term relationship that you're starting with these patients. If you had a patient that did genuinely need to cancel and, you know, sometimes that can be that they've moved away or, you yeah. know, their circumstances have changed, then we simply ask for a month's notice from you or from the patient. Okay. 
So, yeah. you know, we make sure that, say, it's fair, everybody knows what they're signing up to from the beginning. And because yeah. they're paying in advance, you're not giving anything that they haven't already paid for. So you're not going mm. to find yourselves out of pocket for your checkups and your hygiene, for example, because they've paid in advance for those appointments. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I know at the beginning, or oh, a couple of years ago, when the pandemic was, was was happening, I think I spoke to to Nigel and he said there was a actually a lot of loyalty uh, when it came to to the plan system with you guys, and that actually the drop off rate during that period was a, a far oh. far lower than what you anticipated which obviously is great news yeah. but um I, i'm assuming that probably feeds into it as well the transparency of it the fact that you can if things get to that point where you are really struggling yeah. you can just give a month's notice and walk away from it Absolutely. i think that's probably um, and we'd, we'd, peace of mind we'd work with the practice gabby to try and you know make yeah. sure that they're following up with patients that might wish to cancel because sometimes it can be as simple as you know i didn't i didn't know that name on my direct debit you know i didn't mean to cancel. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. again you know we encourage practices to have a follow-up process so that they always mm. know why a patient's cancelled you know quite yeah. often it is something really simple you know that actually they can overcome with the patient and actually put them back on the plan it's a bit of communication it, isn't is, it? Absolutely. always helps yeah. <laughs> so if i'm a i'm a practice owner and i want to make membership plans the default yep. in my practice how do i go about doing that where do i start yeah so again i'm seeing more and more of that you know as i say coming off the back of sort of the covid pandemic and everybody wanting to work in a different way as you, you alluded to earlier, you know, that loyalty we saw from patients during the pandemic when practices were closed, we could never have anticipated it being as, as strong, you know, as we saw, you know, the, the, the drop off rate was so minimal. And it's made mm -hmm. practices really think about, OK, I'd like most of my patients to be on the membership. Now, again, there's different levels of how much of a default you want to make it. I've got some practices who won't see a patient unless they're on the plan. I've got other practices where they just really lead with that as their preferred way of looking after you. Um, for me, it's about your front desk team talking about the plan from that very first phone call with a patient. You know, it's not something that should be sort of left on a leaflet in the waiting room and we hope people might pick it up and ask about it because we know that they just won't. You know, we want <laughs> patients to be having that instruction really from that first phone call. We do work on a membership basis here. Dr. X will mm -hmm. talk to you about that when you come in for your first appointment. Some practices like to follow that up with an email where they might talk again a little bit more about the membership on offer. But we want the membership to be prescribed. We want the dentist to put the patient on the right membership for them. So, you know, giving a patient a menu of, 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 of membership options available isn't my yes. preferred way of doing it. So, you know, we'll really work with you to make sure that your dentists know how to talk about it in the surgery so that again mm -hmm. every touch point in the practice the patients are seeing that the membership is the way you'd like them to to attend um, okay. you know making sure that everybody in the practice knows about your plan um you know if from your nurses to your front desk team to your clinicians you know everybody in your business should be able to talk about the membership with with confidence and again that's a lot yeah. of the work we do with practices excellent well thank you for answering my questions um is there anything else you feel you feel we've missed that you'd like to add no i think that's that's covered quite a lot today <laughs> excellent excellent well thank you very much for your time today really appreciate that You're very welcome thanks gabby